Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, August 13th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's uh, start with a little bit uh, DEFCON cleanup here and look at a great uh, post by SafeBreach. Shmuel Cohen and Oriar uh, did uh, publish a blog post that looked into the details of the Google QuickShare protocol. It's essentially the equivalent of Apple's AirDrop and allows you to quickly send files to other Google Android or Google Chrome users. Of course, these type of protocols often balance simplicity and security and, well, uh, they have some significant uh, gaps here that were discovered uh, by these researchers. For example, it's uh, possible uh, to bypass uh, the approval dialog on Windows or also force a Wi-Fi connection. There were a number of other uh, vulnerabilities here, a few denial of service vulnerabilities, for example, but these two issues have already been addressed by Google. Just a little snippet here, and that's about the file approval dialog bypass in Windows, because it's a very classic kind of vulnerability. So the way the protocol is supposed to work is that I'm sending a request to another user, telling them, hey, I would like to send you a file, and then that user has to approve the request at which point the actual file transfer will start. Well, it turns out you can actually start with the file transfer right away. The actual initial approval is not needed. It can just be skipped. So a very typical kind of authentication bypass vulnerability. Another kind of classic issue involved the use of triple dots instead of double dots for directory traversal, which then can also be used to upload files into directories that later could use to code execution. Updates were released by Google, so make sure your software is up to date. It looks like there is yet another wave of malicious Google Chrome and Edge uh, extensions uh, being deployed by Malware. HealthNet Security has a good summary of this. Uh, there are other stores as well. I'll link to HealthNet Security uh, because uh, they have uh, some good links themselves then to a variety of sources that cover uh, this issue. The problem here is not Google Chrome or Edge, but instead it's users installing malicious software. They apparently try to impersonate VLC, the video player, and KeyPass. Not sure why anybody would really download that from a spoofed website. Maybe there's also some uh, fake uh, Google listings, uh, Google ads or such uh, that are being at play here. But the end effect is that you are being infected with a browser extension. These are not normal browser extensions, uh, but instead they're replacing DLL files, making it impossible basically impossible to just remove these browser extensions using normal means. And of course, as a browser extension, they then have full access to any data that passes through the browser. And Avaris is sadly a bit spotty on this, at least at this point. There are, again, links to other articles that will show you what to look for to identify possibly infected machines. And AMD fixed a vulnerability in its processors that gave it hackers access to the system management mode or SMM. The vulnerability was identified by researchers from IO Active who called it Sync Close. And similar vulnerabilities have also been discovered in Intel processors back in 2015. No big surprise that AMD is affected as well, given some of the architectural similarities here. If exploited, these vulnerabilities could be used to essentially bypass some of the hardware security restrictions and then lead to a persistent compromise of the system. And then we have patches for FreeBSD that fix the recently disclosed regression 
SSH vulnerability, definitely do apply those patches. Exploitation is a little bit tricky, as I pointed out uh, back when that vulnerability was originally uh, revealed, uh, but still something that you probably should patch quickly. Well, and that's it for today. Remember, Tuesday is Patch Tuesday. Again, we'll, of course, have more details as the patches are being released. Any feedback? always welcome. So are any likes and recommendations or reviews on your favorite podcast platform if you haven't already left one yet. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.